Let's say you're meeting with the board of Boeing today. What's your advice to them? I think it's uh, stay the course. I, I've seen companies in crisis all throughout my career, and the ones that survive crisis situations are the ones who have a legacy of a strong corporate reputation. Boeing is one of those companies. If you have that reputation, which is built up over multiple years, uh, even a difficult body blow like the one that they're facing, uh, they're going to survive. And that's because their customers, the airlines, uh, those who fly planes like all of us, have always known Boeing to make great aircraft that are very safe, very well engineered, and it's that reputation that will carry them through what they're facing now. So they have faith in the company, yet yeah, Jim McNerney, the CEO of Boeing, has been missing in action. He's been the booster in chief of the Dreamliner 787 through all of its different problems, the delays and all that. Why is he not out there defending? Does that suggest that he's still trying to get his story straight? I think actually he's following one of the best rules of crisis communications, which is know when is the right time to talk. And he's had some great people out there. Bob Crandall was on your program yesterday talking about, as an airline executive, the confidence in Boeing and their aircraft and the 787. Uh, but I think when you're in a company in crisis, you've got to figure out exactly what happened, why it happened, and what you need to do about it. And then you step forward into the spotlight, appear on your program, and talk. But they're not really staying the course because he has been the one, McInerney, to be the Dreamliner cheerleader since, you know, since they really start building it. And suddenly, we don't see him. So that's not staying the course. I mean, we heard from the chief engineer, and he said just yesterday, I'm 100% convinced the plane is safe to fly. I fly on one myself all the time. Why the chief engineer, not the CEO, who's the face of the company, who gets paid more than anybody else in the joint? Well, I, I do think at the end of the day, the CEO is the ultimate spokesperson for a business, and there's a time and place to use him. Early in this crisis, when they're considering the figure out what actually went wrong, using the people responsible for designing the plane is a good first step, and eventually, Boeing's CEO will step forward, and I think you're going to hear from him very soon. I don't work with Boeing, mm -hmm. so I can't pretend to know exactly what's going on there, but I do know that what they have going for them, just like their rival in the space, Airbus, and the problems they experienced with, with the A330, 380, um, they have a strong track record to build from, and that's going to carry them through. And a lot of sell side analysts point out that these glitches, these difficult launches, are all part of the whole process. It's not separate. The difference now, though, from even when Airbus was launching the A380, is the role of social media. Pictures can go viral, complaints, testimonials can all go viral. Which does the company respond to first then? Does it go to investors? Does it go to potential customers? Does it go to travelers? I'm a strong believer they have to communicate to all audiences. They're all customers of the airline. Those of us that sit down on a Boeing plane and want to know that it's safe are still flying today. And if I had to travel today, I would have no concerns about being on their planes or Airbuses. And you can look at other companies that make planes that have been through crises like Gulfstream. They've just launched the G650. It's sold out for six months of production, and they had a crash during their testing phase that killed a couple of people. Could so these issues change the way people fly? When I book a ticket, I might look at the seating on the plane to know which seat I'm in, where I'm in the plane, but I don't actually spend much time seeing what type of aircraft it is. Following these issues Boeing faces, are we going to see people more concerned about the planes that they're on? And if so, does this add another layer of complications for an industry that already is riddled with headaches? I'll tell you, Stephanie, I'm not an aviation industry expert. I've flown a lot of miles in my career, and I don't think people make those decisions that way, at least not after an initial set of problems on a new aircraft. And ultimately, they hold their airlines accountable for safety and maintenance, probably more than the manufacturer. But again, this is really a classic case of crisis communications. Understand what the problem is, and when you're ready to talk about why it happened, be as transparent as possible. I'm convinced watching Boeing and admiring them over the years, that's exactly what you're going to see them do. Before we go, I want to talk more broadly when companies have crisis at the top, how they manage it. Just today, Bloomberg Business Week came out with their story about HP, leadership woes, leadership failures that they've had. You spent years at HP in those conference rooms with Leo Apotaker. The story we read, if you haven't read it, is extraordinary. What goes on in the heat of those moments? I mean, the story of a chair being thrown at you, it's just not how I see CEOs, boards, 
behaving, but is that truly what it's like at crisis moment? Well, I, first, I was thrilled to serve at a management capacity at HP for uh, just about a year, not a couple of years, but I've been in the corporate world for quite a while. When crises take place, there's a lot at stake. Um, I'm a big admirer of Ashley Vance and Aaron Riccadella. They did a great job in covering an HP story that's been very well documented. I think like Boeing, like Airbus, HP will survive the crises it faces because its customers have confidence in them and ultimately that's where their reputation comes from. But this is serious business and it's a high stakes game. Look at what's happening at Herbalife today. There's a lot on the line and that's when communications plays a very important role. Now with the advent of social media and 24 hour a day news news coverage, you've got to be out there and be transparent and talking to your customer base. I have to ask, I know Herbalife isn't a company that you work with, you might not follow the story. I find it interesting that they waited a full three weeks following Bill Ackman's presentation where he went short the company for them to come out and present. From a crisis management standpoint, is it a smart move to wait, get your ducks in a row, or strike while the iron's hot before the stock starts moving and declining and defend yourself right off the bat? Because it's interesting that we haven't heard from them for weeks. What do you think about that? Well, I don't know the Herbalife situation. I, I am always a believer that being transparent with your, uh, with your stakeholders, including shareholders is always a good idea but there's a time and place to communicate and I think her in the Herbalife situation there's a reason behind it I, I wish I could tell you what the reason is I don't know uh, there is a point where waiting too long can come back and get to you and you can see that uh, back from the BP crisis in the Gulf and I'm sure we're going to hear from Boeing executives very quickly uh, delay is never really a great idea but sometimes there's a reason to wait and I'm sure there's a good one in the Herbalife situation